British Columbians are heading to the polls for the second time during the pandemic, and this time it's a federal election. Parliament needs an opportunity to get a mandate from Canadians. Liberal leader Justin Trudeau wants to form a majority government after winning a minority government in 2019. But polls show the majority of Canadians don't think the election should be happening in the middle of the fourth wave. Regardless, September 20th is election day, so here's what you need to know. BC holds 42 of the 338 seats in the House of Commons. Before the election was called, the Conservatives held 17 of those seats. The Liberals and NDP each had 11. The Greens had two, and BC had one independent. So how might the seats in BC change this election? The Liberals are sort of holding steady at that, uh, that 2019 uh, number, you know, at least on the polls that we have for BC. Uh, and the Conservatives have, have dropped a little bit, but the seat projections might still be uh, about the same for them. Uh, the only real big difference is the NDP surging a little bit here in the province. It's an election where um, I've never seen so many undecided voters, even at this point. So I think people will be staying up late in Ontario and watching what happens in BC. One nail biter will be Port Moody Coquitlam. It was one of the closest races in the country in the 2019 election. The Conservatives beat out the NDP by just 153 votes. The area's demographics are rapidly changing, with younger families moving from Vancouver in search of more affordable housing. Then there's Vancouver Granville. Jody Wilson-Raybould has held this seat since 2015. Justin Trudeau booted her from the Liberal Party after the SNC-Lavalin affair in 2019, but she won her seat again as an independent. Now she's called it quits, and the Liberals are hoping to reclaim the riding. But they're dealing with the fallout from reports that their candidate flipped multiple houses in recent years. Over on Vancouver Island, the Greens are looking to retain their two seats. Former party leader Elizabeth May is expected to win the Saanich Gulf Islands riding again, but Nanaimo Ladysmith has become a battleground. The Conservatives, NDPs are really, really, you know, putting a lot of energy and money into that riding. They want that green seat. The parties just have four weeks to convince voters. So what are British Columbians most concerned about? For starters, the environment and climate change. The province suffered devastating wildfires and a record-breaking heat wave this past summer. The protests against old growth logging at Ferry Creek have also garnered international attention. I think a lot of people are still thinking, well, how come we haven't met our targets and how come we're still behind other G7 countries in terms of our reductions? So I think th there, there is the, the issue for the Liberals. Housing affordability is another key issue. While provinces have more control, the feds can still pull some levers. Things like foreign homeowner taxes, mortgage interest rates, and funding for affordable housing. The NDP is emphasizing renters and social housing, while the Conservatives and Liberals are catering to homeowners and those wanting to enter the market. But some housing experts warn the platforms don't go far enough to curb soaring real estate prices. It's difficult to say that one party has come out on top in that particular debate in British Columbia. I think it's really about certain demographics being targeted by each of the parties. So once you've made up your mind, how does voting work? There are four ways to cast a ballot. You might have already voted at an advanced poll between September 10th and 13th. Elections Canada also allowed voting at its offices up until September 14th and will accept mail-in ballots from anyone registered by that day. If you're still deciding though, don't worry. Double check your voting card to see your assigned location and bring ID. If you don't have any, you can still vote, as long as you have someone to vouch for you who can provide their identity and address. And once you've cast a ballot, don't be surprised if you have to wait for results. Depending on how close the race is as well, you know, we might not be able to call a, a winner on election night. We might have to wait a few days until all of the mailed in ballots are counted.